that it comes from my soul and all the gifts that I was given to come here and express and it comes from my willingness to really step up make the choices and take the actions that are necessary to create the, the life I want to have welcome to the badass manifester podcast keeping you inspired with high vibe content, bringing you the best manifestation and mindset tools, teachings, interviews, and answering questions to help empower you to get out of your own way and take massive action to make magic your everyday normal. I'm your host, Ashley Gordon, spiritual life and manifestation coach, helping women and spiritual entrepreneurs manifest more impact, influence, and income. It is my purpose and pleasure to help you wake up to the badass creator that you are. Let's do this. OMG, this is going to be such a good episode because I am diving into Akashic Records with Serena Curran. She's awesome. And during this episode, this episode was recorded before I had my Akashic Record archetype reading and clearing. And I just have to share with you all that it was such a cool experience. I mean, I knew very little about the Akashic Records and basically she wrote me a whole report on my manifesting archetypes for that are in my soul record and what and how I'm aligned with them and where I'm stuck around them and where I need to break through and things that are holding me back. And we went back literally, you guys, 14 lifetimes ago. And we cleared things that were showing up and looping into this lifetime today. This is only a couple days after my clearing with Serena, but I already feel a shift. And I'm really, really excited for everything that's to come. I have a couple more things booked with her. Um, She talks about the intention. She can go into an intention and see how how far along it is or what's blocking from it. And I'm going to do that. And I'm really, really excited. So... I'll keep you guys posted on my Akashic Record experience and the link is in the bio for you guys to book with her. She also has a course coming out. I don't usually promote other people's courses. This is like very different though. So um, her course is really, really cool and she does the reading that's included in it and it's starting on February 20th. So the link is in the show notes and I hope you guys so love this episode. We've never talked about this on the podcast before and it's such a cool topic. So have fun. Welcome back to the Badass Manifester podcast. I'm so happy to be with you guys today because I have a very special guest today. Her name is Serena Curran. And I'm really excited for you guys to meet her. We've never had anyone like her on the show. And you're going to want to probably take out a notebook or sit down and just receive this information because it's going to be really, really awesome. So Serena is a spiritual teacher. She is also a healer, a soul genie, and she is a Akashic record expert. And she has such an interesting... um, interesting way of using the Akashic Records to help spiritual entrepreneurs up-level their income and their business. And she's such a sweet soul. I'm sitting with her right now, and so I'm going to bring her on. But I'm really excited for you guys to listen. I'm excited to dive in. So welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Lee. Thank you, Ashley. What a lovely intro. It's so nice to be here with you. Thank Thank you. So you said it better than I did. Can you just explain to everyone a little bit about what you do? Uh, Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, So I work with people's Akashic record and the Akashic record is the record of everything that's ever happened to your soul. And um, it has in there your own, your very own manifesting archetypes or your soul powers. We can call them the same thing. And so those manifesting archetypes, uh, when you align with them, make it so much easier for you to create wealth and prosperity for yourself and to sculpt your business to be really to fit you like a glove instead of you know a lot of people are um look at all these different um systems and gurus and ways of creating a business but really you know making the business suit you is the is really a a lot uh, more fulfilling and actually the much easier path for wealth 
Wow. So true. It's so true. And it kind of like reminds me a little bit, I know it's different, but of human design. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but it's almost like we have a design and if we're, if we're not in alignment with it, then we feel bad and we feel out of disconnected. And it sounds like it's similar with your soul. Like your soul has a, has a blueprint and we have to align with that blueprint to kind of maximize our, our impact and time here. Yes. It's, well, it's interesting because I, I have a very good friend who does human design and we've spent a lot, a lot of time talking about the differences between human design and Akashic Records. And human design tends to be about this lifetime. And uh, whereas the uh, looking at your soul records is the more um, is the more original is the original gifts that you had have and so they kind of complement each other. I mean, uh, I like to use my human design too to uh, to to um, make decisions. Sure. But um, human design is very complicated. Yes. And <laughs> and uh, so I've tried to study it a few times, and I finally go, oops. Somebody tell me what the story is here. But um, and so with the Akashic Record reading, though, you're going to get specific information about your manifesting archetypes, which are your soul powers, which are individual to you, and then how you can use them in your business. And so it's very specific information that you can align to and create that business that, that brings you more money with ease. That's so cool. So as far as like a manifesting archetype, is that, would, would you say that that, like people that can manifest things easily are more in touch with it unconsciously? Um, well, they're <laughs> interesting. What, some people actually are better manifestors than others. Right. That's in your soul. And that's in your soul, by the way. So I can actually tell you if that's part, everyone is a manifester and everyone can manifest, but there are some people who have power in their soul, have an archetype in their soul it makes them a much quicker and faster manifester. Can you, that's and, so interesting. Can you give an example yeah. of like what that could be? You guys, I wanted Serena to give me a live reading, but it doesn't work that way. And we'll get into that in a minute. But I'm just curious, like what would be an archetype that could give someone that? Well, it'd be the archetype of power. Okay. And so somebody who's in power is a very fast acting person. So they're right there. You've got a clue, right? Right. Because manifesting is about changing your vibration. And if you can change it quickly, you can manifest quickly. Mm. So uh, those people have that ability. They're usually people that are, you know, they're kind of impatient. They're uh, fast acting people. They move quickly. Other people can't keep up with them normally. Um, of course, the downside of it is that when you're a quick manifester is that if things aren't manifesting, there's something wrong and you need to stop and start over again. Mm. Um, time is not going to fix it. So that's why it's really important to know, am I one of those people that's on that edge of, um, I manifest really quickly, but if it's not manifesting, that means, uh Oh, something's wrong because I'm a fast manifester or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a regular style manifester. There's many other pieces about manifesting in this too, but I'm yeah. a, I'm a usual kind of manifester. So for me, continuing, um, to work on it might be the right choice. Um, let me just say that I'm talking about manifesting archetypes here, but we you also have within your records the your certain qualities about how you manifest. So for example, some people are outcome oriented and some people are process oriented. However, when, when manifesting is taught, it's always taught as an outcome oriented process, a uh, way of going. That is, you set a goal and you follow it, you do vision boards and stuff. And for people who are process oriented, that does not work. So there's, there's nuances here. <laughs> there's many nuances here. And you can be both, right? You could be both. I feel Some like I'm both, both, just intuitively. That's how I feel. Um, okay. So for you, it matters how you go about doing it and the outcome matters as well. Because sometimes it's like, I'll let go of the outcome. Like I'll have a vision board, but like, I, I'm not like, okay, this has to happen this way, you know? And I'm more of like mm -hmm. a feeling person. So if I'm just feeling good, I'm dancing around and my vibration's really high. That's when I feel like the most powerful. Not when I'm like, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be money. I'm going to be money. Like, it's not like that. You know, it's, it's more yeah. of like a, a feeling of excitement, I guess. I don't know. It's interesting. Well, yeah, I think that's really, that's an important point is whenever you, you have something that you desire, 
like let's whatever it is it's not you, when you understand what the feeling is that you really want to have when you have that object or thing or experience then you can sit right now and say well how do i have that feeling now mm -hmm. and so as you have that feeling now you are actually now vibrating in alignment with that desire make sense right. yeah for sure yeah so yeah so um, that's what you're doing really yeah that, <laughs> totally so my question is is uh, when you access these records and you get to these manifesting archetypes, are they um, are they the same archetypes through each lifetime? Like when yes. you as you incarnate, it's you have that same power. Yes, that's the, because we're actually reading your soul, your soul's original blueprint. So yes, these are the powers that you're carrying. These are the archetypes that you're carrying from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. Which brings me to the next piece, which is as your soul is traveling through those lifetimes, it's having experiences. And some of those experiences are intense enough that they cause, they're intense enough choices against your free will that they cause blocks and restrictions in your records. And those blocks and restrictions keep you from expressing those manifesting archetypes. Therefore, they're in the way of your manifestation, of your making money or doing whatever it is you want. And they can only be corrected at the soul level. No matter how much mental and emotional healing you do, it will not correct these at that at, at its point, point of origin. Wow. So I know there's people listening there like, this is so cool. And they're wondering, they're how people. And they're like, but how do you know this, Serena? Like, how do you know how to do this? How do you access this information? Are your abilities, like, are you, can you just pick up on things all the time or you have to be in trance for this? Like, how does it work? Well, I've been doing this kind of work, doing healing work for 25 years. So I've always worked intuitively and um, I actually came to a place and, and I've traveled all around and I would land in a new place, new country, new state, new place and create a new business and a new life in a few days. So, so I'm a quick manifester. So um, I got to a point where I couldn't get anything to work. Nothing would work, nothing would work, nothing would work. And I couldn't find what was wrong. And I have, a, I have a bag of tricks, a huge bag of tricks of all kinds of tools and techniques to use and other healers to access. And suddenly, Akashic Records have been around me for a long time. And I finally listened and I heard someone speak about the Akashic Records and clearing them. I said, oh, that's what I need to do. And I, so I did it. And that's when everything, all these things opened up for me again. So I understood the power then of do, the reading the records in this way. And so I did a lot of training so that I can do this. So I can, I can go into the Akashic records and I can just, I, I don't have to do anything to do it. I can just say, I'm going in the Akashic records and I can sense them. I can mm -hmm. feel I'm there. And then I can find the, I just ask for the soul that I'm going to read for. And I have specific questions I ask so that I get specific information. And so I come back and I know your soul's, your soul manifesting archetypes. I know your soul origination. I know your soul specialization. There are many other things I can know about your soul as well or your experience. I can, I can tell whether, you're, whether you've got enough intentions out there or not or whether you need to put more intentions out there. And then I also look and that see- That is so cool. Are. <laughs> it is cool. It's very, really cool. It's, it's so powerful. I, I, I can't even express how powerful it is. Um, I will, I'll, I'll give you some examples in a few minutes, but then I look and see what the blocks and restrictions are. And those could be present life or past life. And if they're past life, I get the past life story. And I tell you, what were the choices you made that created this problem? Because guess what? Those choices you're still making mm -hmm. because they're in that original record and those things are still influencing you and it's so much fun to read that and is that karma that. yeah we could call it karma because it's it's the it it's the result of choices you made right but they were big choices against your free will so big that they made changes in your your record that are they're there until they get cleared so when when you say that you when you made choices against your free will Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, that's not processing in my brain. Like I know that I have free will, 
Right. So when I make choices against, it's, it's against things that I truly want. Yes. Or something that you knew was better for you. Let's say you're, let's take an example. You're in a relationship right? and you know, it's better for you to leave the relationship and you don't, and you don't, okay. and you don't, Got you, it. Don't, you don't. That's a simple example of it. You're making a choice against your free will. And right. sometimes people have made big choices against their free will that cause problems. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. It's Can a- I just um, celebrate really quick? Like this is so yeah. auspicious, you guys. Like right now we're talking about all this deep stuff, but also Serena is all about helping entrepreneurs make more money, make more impact. And literally right now I just received a very large PayPal notification. So thank you, Serena, for this energy. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Congratulations. I'm <laughs> very happy for you. Now Thanks. I'll be expecting my PayPal to show up too. <laughs> exactly. Both of our PayPals are about to go off. So this is the vibe we're in, you all. You, we're all connected to this, everyone that's listening. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So we'll ground it a little bit and say that what's really important about knowing your manifesting archetypes is it gives you the opportunity to align with them. And once mm-hmm. they're cleared, so that you actually can access them because you can't sometimes access them. So sometimes people know what those, when I say, oh, you have this and that, oh yes, I I recognize that about myself. Sometimes they don't recognize it because they think everybody has it or Mm -hmm. they don't recognize it because they don't have access to it because of their particular blocks and restrictions. Everyone's are different. And uh, so, uh, once you've got that information, then you can align your business with those, your, the way that you do business with those manifesting archetypes, the choices you make about your business makes mm-hmm. a huge difference. First of all, people feel very confident because they actually know, yes, I know now this is the, really the truth about who I am and what I'm be doing here mm-hmm. because your purpose is to express those manifesting archetypes. And uh, so people have doubled their income overnight. They have um, gotten an invitation to speak in front of 500 of their, their um, target audience uh, based on one phone call. Um, they've, uh, you know, I had a client recently that um, was greatly in debt and she, within a few months, and, um, uh, uh, was able to clear that debt and actually go on vacation uh, because she shifted, based, she shifted her business based on her archetypes. And is that based scary on the guidance. for some people to do? Because like, if you learn something about yourself that's so out of alignment from where you are, like, like for example, if you if we were to do our session and you're like, okay, the way that your business is set up right now is not in alignment with your soul, right? And so, I would changing everything that would scare me. But like, I would, tr- I think I would trust it. I would have to feel into that. But I'm sure it's like not always easy for people. Well, I haven't had that experience because Ashley, for one thing is you, you can probably intuitively guess that you're pretty much in alignment and your business wouldn't be working well. Right. That's true. And so, so most of the people I'm working with, um, have a business, maybe they've, maybe they've had it for a few years and they're earning, they could be earning six figures even, but they're like, they can't, they want to go bigger and they can't, they they don't have the bandwidth. They, they can't find the way they're, they're blocked from going further or their lifestyle is suffering because they're spending all their time working hard right. and hustling to make their business run. Or they just like, um, you know, they, um, they just can't find the way to, to move forward. Yeah. So they're in a different place than you are. They, they could be successful, but they like working too hard. This isn't working for me. I, I'm like, I'm not liking what way my business is going. That so that sense. isn't the, what your, that isn't your experience. So that's a clue right there that you are already um, naturally in alignment. It could be that if, when you get your records cleared, that you are, you go to another level. Right. That's a, that just popped in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you've already got the base and that's, you know, every, most of the people I work with already have some, they usually have a business of some sort. And I work with all kinds of people. Um, I, I even had a client recently who was a referral who d- said, I don't know what Akashic records are. I don't know anything about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And she's like so thrilled that she jumped in and did it. So cool. Um, because so it also cool. affects your relationships. It, you know, Oh um, yeah. It, you know, so I do... often have my, I'm sorry, clients. go ahead. I have so many questions. <laughs> I know I'll, I'll stop in a second. I often have clients have big changes in their relationships based on um, doing this work as well. 
Do you ever do couples together? Um, I don't do them together, but what I do is I have read for both members of the party. I can do a relationship reading as well, but I have read for a husband and wife or, you know, a boyfriend and girlfriend, and then um, clear their records. And then I can talk about their relationship to what's they, they, where, where they, how many lives they've known each other and stuff like that. So yes, I can do that. That is so cool. Yeah. So when you clear someone's records, do you, does the other person have to be present for that? Or is it a group? Is it something you do together? Is it something that you just do on your own? Um, I can do it on my own, but I usually do it with the client. What it really entails is, first of all, I can't make any changes in your record at all without your permission. Right. Free without well, your consciousness. Yeah. Without your consciousness saying it's okay. So I can do a clearing all day long. And if you decide you're not going to allow that clearing, then there's nothing I can do about that. So basically, if you, what I, what I can do is uh, do the reading, tell you about, I like to do, tell you about what caused the issues so that you can recognize them in your life to raise your awareness. Sure. So that when, the, you're, you're, when it comes up again, you go, oh, there it is again, or if it comes up again, and you, can, you know, now have the freedom to make a different choice. Yeah. And of course, choices are really actions, by the way, because you can all day long make choices in your head and they're not going to create anything on the physical plane. Oh, now let me finish. Okay. So I can do the clearing separately. And when I usually what I do is say to the client at the end of the reading, uh, by the way, um, the clearing has been done. Are, do you, are, you, are you willing to receive it? And they say yes. And then the ch changes happen. So it's done ahead of time, but not until you give permission for it to be, actually happen. Most often I do the clearing in the presence of the client so that they can hear the clearing. Just not because I have to, because I feel like it's, it helps them. Mm. Sometimes I don't, sometimes it depends on the client. I think, yeah, no, I would want to hear it for sure. I would want to be like, okay, yeah. information received, right? <laughs> like, yeah. It's, and it's, a, and it's a sacred moment too. It's a sacred experience. Absolutely. And, some, and the other reason is, um, I know when I received my clearing, I did not, they did, it was not read. It was just, I said, yes, that I wanted to receive the clearing and I can feel energy. I'm very sensitive. You know, I could feel energy peeling off of me and coming wow. off of me. So when I do a clearing with a client and I, I read through it, it gives them an opportunity to have some experiences if that's, if they're sensitive to those as well. So cool. And when you're doing this, are you in a trance or are your eyes open? Are they closed? I'm just normal like I am right now. Oh, that's just so cool. The, just, in, just in the Akashic records. No, I don't do any trance. Just in the Akashic records and your record keepers are actually the ones that are making the changes. Oh my God, this is so interesting. So um, can anyone read Akashic records or is that part of your record to be able to read records? <laughs> well, anyone can learn to read the Akashic records and I highly recommend that you do so. Um, to do what I do takes a lot of training. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, if you learn to read the Akashic records or learn to go in the Akashic records and you go in there and ask questions and so on, that can be very helpful to you. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I've been trained, I have a lot of training um, yeah. to be able to do the Akashic Records. And then as it turns out, my sole specialization is a restoration master, which means I, I um, have a natural understanding of soul blueprints and how to fix them. So, so for me, it's a, uh, yeah, I know. It's I a show in. It there. It's a <laughs> yeah. show. When did you discover this? How long ago? Just a few years ago. Wow. That's so wild. <laughs> It's like yeah. when, the, when the teacher's ready or when the student's ready, the teacher appears, but also, you know, the student is sometimes the teacher as well. <laughs> Can I share something really exciting though, too? For is sure. That I, I, I'm also I'm able to remote view. And so I'm taking, I'm learning medical intuitive uh, and I'm doing that not because I'm going to do, I'm, I just started the course um, to learn how to, to, to use those skills is that because when I'm working with a client in their Kashuk records, I'm going to be able to add on to that. Uh, some really cool other things on the physical level as well. That's so. super cool. I'm excited about that. I, I'm, that's a secret that I just gave you. <laughs> Ooh, watch out, everyone. That's really, really <laughs> exciting. That's really cool. Yeah. That's yeah. actually funny because before this, when I asked if you wanted to do the live reading, I had a medical intuitive do that for me when we were you know, on the podcast, but it was just like, and then mm. the connection got bad and I was, it didn't work out. It's just funny. But that is a really cool thing to be able yeah. to add on because I mean does that show up in the Akashic records does illness show up is that if that's not really a soul um, thing 
No, I, I don't, I don't know, but if you had certain beliefs or things that sure. are in the record, you know, beliefs that are, uh, can be in your records, um, or imprints, and there are various kinds of things that could be in your records that it, the, the belief itself isn't causing it, but the, the things that you do based on that belief actually cause the illness. Cause them Ill. yeah, yeah, because um, all illnesses come from emotion, right? You know, come right. from emotions. I started out as a hands-on healer, so I have a lot of experience with healing as well. I was a, I was a certified healing tech practitioner at one time. So amazing! Wow, wow, wow. Okay, cool. So, um, where else do we go from here? Like, what what do people need to know? What's the most important thing would you say that people need to know about their souls? Hmm. Um, I think that I, you know, obviously I think you need to know your man. I, I think everyone should have their records cleared. I think they should, everyone should find out their manifesting archetypes, their soul powers and have their records cleared, first of all. But I think what I'd like to say to everyone now is that every right now in this moment, you're creating your records. So every choice that you make, um, and all of those, uh, now I want to be really careful here because it isn't your feelings and your emotions that just random feelings and emotions that create things in your records. It's the sustained emotions or the sustained thoughts that can create some change in your records. So it's some just really interesting to think about when you're making a choice today about what you're going to do, or if you're entertaining a, a thought that you've been entertaining for months over and over again, you're actually creating your records at this moment that are, you're going to live from as you, so you're creating your future in this moment. That's yes. what I'm saying, which, yeah. You're doing that on a soul level. You're doing that on a physical level, physical manifestation yeah. level. Yes. On a lot of levels here. Um, that's a yeah. beautiful thing yeah. to say. And then like in my head, yeah. it, it reminds me of like back in school, like this is going on your permanent record. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to remember that actually. <laughs> that's good. But the, the important part is that this is a, this is archetypes are, like sources of information that you can use to help yourself in making those daily choices and in creating your future. And so that's the value here is if you know these manifesting archetypes, you can, you can sculpt your business to fit those mm. and to fit those, that soul, those soul qualities. And how much easier is business when it's aligned with who you are at soul level? And that's what I'm really about is helping business people. And so I have a lot of fun because I have a lot, I have an MBA as well. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a junkie, a school junkie, I guess. I love um, it. But, um, so I really have a lot of fun helping people to redesign their, their strategy or their business model based on what their actual gifts are. So I, let's say I had a, a chiropractor I worked with who for years felt like she wasn't making the money she should be making based on the results that she was getting. She was more than a chiropractor. She did nutritional stuff and all kinds of other things, but she, she for years knew that she should be making more money and she wanted more freedom. And really it was looking at her records, clearing them and shifting her business model gave her the freedom and the financial return that she'd been looking for for years on end. So there's a lot of magic in these, uh, knowing these records. No, I can't specific. wait to get a reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I, I always have, me too. You know, I like to, I think of myself as a soul genie. I'm always like, oh, what's in those records? I can't wait to see. <laughs> right? Right. Do you pick up on people, other things as well? Or is it just like mainly in the records? Um, well, right now I'm focused on that, but I am an intuitive. And so when I'm working with, I, I, have, I, I have programs, obviously, where I do uh, where I work with people on an ongoing basis, or I do teaching, and of, of course, in those, I'm always giving intuitive information and, and just information that comes to me. It's, right, you know, right, right. Yeah, I, that I, comes I, to me. Yeah, that's cool. That like when you are in this field of coaching and teaching and healing and all the things, like I, I, I've been trusting that more and more. Like whatever comes through is just what needs to come through, and. Sometimes yeah. it's like, wait, what? But just say it anyway, you know, and just exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then there's been other times when I go, wow, that was really cool. I better write that down. <laughs> that was Same. that was that was interesting. Where did that Someone come from? Write that down. Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's when it's just the inspired, or even like I was talking to a client, all of a sudden the name of an author came in my my mind. Oh, you should read. I was Brenny Brown. I said you should read Brenny Brown. 
I just, oh my, so loving this. It's so perfect. I, you know, wow. So well, cool. yeah, because it came from somewhere else. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Yeah. So awesome. And that's an archetype, by the way. That's another archetype, the archetype of that is a teacher that winds up being a teacher and a, and a channel. And there are certain qualities about how they have to operate that makes them work better than others. Like a teacher, for example, I'm a teacher also, is that um, teachers are not necessarily very good at marketing. They, they do a lot of teaching and forget that there's a difference between teaching and marketing. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's so interesting. Wow. Wow. So, so you know that that's something that you actually have to kind of take, yeah. take a deliberate action on and not it's like not sit on. That. Yes. And be aware of that. Um, it's even in conversation, you can give away a lot of information just because it comes naturally to you. And then you wind right. up, you can answer all the questions without ever having worked with someone. So, oh my so gosh. It is a, yeah. it's, some people have to really watch for that. Yeah, you have to value your time and your energy. Right, right, and distinguish between teaching and marketing, that they're two different beasts. Oh, yeah, oh, that's what you're talking Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to give enough value without giving away the kitchen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And yeah. wanting to be of service, you know. Right, for so sure. Those are that, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, of course, your soul origination is where your soul um came from in the universe and there's a whole bunch of different places and when you have when you know that it has it flavors how you would use your manifesting archetypes it can it can flavor it a lot or it can flavor it a little depending on what you're i'm so curious one. where my soul is originated from like that <laughs> I'm so curious it was so funny because i live in new jersey i live in near atlantic city and mm -hmm. um i had a client come in last week for a breakthrough day and we're in atlantic city and I said to her, you know, one time a psychic told me that my soul, my soul home is Atlantic City. And I know that that's not what you're talking about, but that's what was said to me. And I think she heard me say Atlantis and she was like, oh my God, me too. But we both <laughs> were like joke. Like I was like, wait, this is so crazy. Someone told you your, your soul's from Atlantic City too? <laughs> Oh, well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, a, it was really fun. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm so yeah. happy that um, you came on the show and you share, you're just sharing about this important topic that everybody obviously needs. So where can people get in touch with you? How do you, how do you do what you do? Do you like, I know you said you have courses and things like that. You could, do you want to share about that? Right. Sure. I have a course called More Money with Ease, and it actually begins with your receiving your soul, your manifesting archetypes in your soul and getting a clearing. And then it's a six week program in which we go through the topics that will help you to, to align to your soul. So there's things about your emotional uh, clearing and uh, using your intuition about boundaries, about money, about sales. Um, all of the things that uh, areas that you need to work in. But the thing is, I approach everything differently than everyone else does. <laughs> so you're going to learn something very, very different than what you would learn elsewhere about these topics. And uh, that course is um, just now I'm uh, launching it for the end of this month. And um, so you can reach me through my website, serenacurran.com, S-E-R-E-N-A. C U R R A N dot com or Serena at Serena Curran dot com. Awesome. Just send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, there's a free gift on my website as well. Oh, so, um, awesome. I'm really excited about this. Uh, um, and I really, the results that my clients get are so powerful that I'm eager to share it with as many business women as I can. That's so beautiful. Are you on Instagram as well? I'm not on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I have a page on Facebook, Serena Curran International. I have a Facebook profile. Okay. Uh, I'm not a real visual person, so I opted out of Instagram. I know everyone else is on it. <laughs> I mean, I always like to ask, and then that's cool. Like, follow what platform feels good for you. Um, yeah. And everyone, go check out her website. And I always ask my guests when they come on, the last thing I want to ask you is, what makes you a badass manifester? 
Well, I'm going to say that it comes from my soul and all the gifts that I was given to come here and express. And it comes from my willingness to really step up, make the choices and take the actions that are necessary to create the, the life I want to have or to connect with the life I want to have. Amazing. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have an amazing day. And you guys, y'all listening, have an amazing day. Make sure you tag me on Instagram or on Facebook, Ashley at Manifest with Ash, and make sure you go check out Serena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Badass Manifester podcast. I love manifesting Mondays with you. And there's so much more in store right here. The best way to manifest love is to give love. If you loved what you heard today, subscribe to the Badass Manifester podcast. Leave a review on iTunes. Let me know how much you dig the energy here. All of my social is linked up in the show notes. So screenshot this episode, tag me on Instagram, and let me be part of your real-time journey. For more info on me, feel free to go to my website, manifestwithash.com. Repeat after me. I am my own power source. I am the master of my energy, and I deserve everything that I desire. Go get them.